driving to the ranch. Should we talk about how you got started and all that? Sure. Sure. So about nine years ago, my uh, business mechanic was getting married. And at his wedding, his cousin was going to work down at uh, Barnesville at Dickinson Cattle. And at the wedding reception, he showed me a picture of drag iron. And uh, I saw a picture of drag iron, and I said, uh, are they friendly? And he said, yeah. And I said, I got to own one of those. So that was in May, and I bought my ranch with the farm that I turned into my ranch August 30th that same year, and my first three head of cattle were delivered Thanksgiving Day in 2013. So you moved quickly? I moved very quickly. And then since then, do you still have any of those same cows, or have you switched things over? Uh, I've done, a, so my first six years was kind of like a big learning curve of genetics, learning all about genetics. Um, what to have, what not to have, if I'm going to play in the uh, maturity world or if I want to be a breeder, what I exactly wanted to do. About three years ago, I did a total ranch rebuild. So what are some of the cows that you have, or who are some of the cows that you have now here? I currently, I currently have a BCR Wanted Woman, a 7D Mini Oreo, Fifth Weapon, which will be sold next week at the Legend Sale, Gavlin Gabby. I currently have four bulls in rotation. I have BCR Diego, uh, HL Pony Up, um, LM Danny Boy, and then I'm also part of the uh, Mark Romance syndication. Nice. So did you grow up on a farm? I knew nothing about animals. This was just a slightly impulsive type thing, and it's honestly, I've been in a lot of business ventures over the last 35 years. And by far, this is the most emotionally rewarding one. It hasn't quite been a, a financially rewarding yet because you, you, you got to just build it. But uh, it's been the most unique business venture I've ever been involved with. So if it hasn't been financially rewarding yet, you said it's emotionally rewarding. Like, um, how, what, gets, what keeps you in it? Like, what makes it emotionally rewarding? <laughs> um, the cows are one thing. I think it's the people we meet and the relationships we create amongst this this industry. I mean, it's filled with just amazing people. They welcome people with open arms. Um, they're, just, they're just real good people. I agree. So what do you do outside of Longhorns? Uh, first of all, I have an identical twin brother, and we started a landscape construction company 34 years ago and then 23 years ago we started a green waste recycling facility um, so I do uh, green waste recycling I uh, recycle yard waste we make mulch topsoil we do uh, structured soils for golf courses construction jobs state and county jobs nice and that's all in Toledo all in Toledo nice. so your ranch name is laid back ranch how did you get that name so the guy that my mechanic that used to help me at the ranch. He's moved on since then. His wife got a new job and they got transferred, so I lost him after the ranch was built. I work about 70 hours a week plus at my other two companies. And we're out working at the ranch one Saturday and uh, he's like, I've got the perfect name for your ranch, Laid Back Ranch. I'm like, where do you get that at? He's like, you're so high strung during the week, running nonstop from seven in the morning till eight o'clock at night. And you get out here and you're just this laid back, calm person. And we're building cattle fence and you're carrying pipe. And you're the most laid back I've ever seen. And that's where the name came from. That's that, huh? That's that. Nice. I think a lot of people would say that they're probably pretty laid back yep. at their ranch. It's their happy place. So There's no... Enjoy. It doesn't matter how long my day is or what goes on during my day. I look forward to coming home, seeing my two dogs and jumping in the, in the gator and walking out and walking around the pasture. I mean, there's such a calming part of just longhorns. They're just, they're, they're amazing. Of course, when we, we get into calving season, there's some slight anxiety when it goes to calving season, but, you know, once they're all on the ground and stuff, there's just something about longhorns, man. They just calm you. There's just, it's amazing. I'd agree. I think lots of everyone else would agree, too. Yep. So you have a daughter. Yes. And two grandkids. I do. Are any of them interested in cows? Um, my daughter, no. Uh, my grandson, yes. And my granddaughter, kind of. They think it's cool to come out there and watch them and see them, but 
no one's willing to start shoveling any cow poop soon. So maybe in a few years. Maybe who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Never know. My employees love it, so I, I have the ability to take my employees to help me work when we work cattle or whatever I gotta separate or work cows I grab a couple of my employees well it's been the same two for the last three years and they just they, they absolutely love it so you think they'll eventually get their own who knows I, I mean one of them's my age so I, I, I don't know but they just love it they love coming out there seeing them now there's times they don't come out there for six months and they come out and see they were out there when the calving season, and then now they see them when I'm weaning them, and they're like, oh my God, she's changed so much, or whatever. It's it's pretty cool. They like it. So you live in Ohio. Yes. And how do you, what do you do for marketing for your program? Um, we're, still, we're still in the, the, the working phase of that on marketing. I mean, I, I feel like some of the genetics I have up there, the area up there just haven't seen those genetics yet. So we're still working on doing some more broader advertising and marketing to start marketing my ranch. Locally. Locally. But you do a lot. You do a lot on Facebook. You're pretty active. I do. I do. Still learning that as well. I'm not the most uh, tech savvy person in the world. You'll get there. I know. I hope. So when you're at a sale, what do you look for? Even when you're just looking to purchase animal private treaty, what do you look for? Um... Well, since I've done my ranch rebuild, you know, I, I see a lot that I make the same, I don't want to say mistake that everybody else does. We go and we buy a bunch of cows and then we try to figure out who we want to breed them to. And you're dealing with so many different genetic families. I picked three or four genetic families that I like and I'm playing with them. And I'm trying to see what I can do with breeding those genetics because it gets, it's too hard for me to figure out, because not every cow belongs with every bull, so I've got to figure out what genetic land I'm in, pick three or four different bulls, do some AI work, and see what I do. So have you seen the results of any of that work I'm yet? starting to see that now, yes. First, This is the first year? First year. So maybe we'll have to watch for them next year, or yes. a couple years in futurities. And plus, I'm starting, plus I just built a, a brand new IVF facility, so I'm starting to IVF and do some of that stuff, so we're starting to see some of those. Actually, I have some calves this fall, so I'll be interested to see what my uh, thought was on the breeding decisions that I've made. Right. So when you you are pretty active in fraternities. Yes. When you are, so you've been a judge yes. as a participant as well. Yes. So when you go to enter some of your animals in fraternities, what are you looking for in your animals to place them in a fraternity? And is it different at different fraternities? Um, that's a, that's a two part question. So yes, um, I, it's always nice to know who the judges are because over time, everybody knows kind of what, what each judge likes. I mean, some judges like bigger bodies, some like smaller, you know, horn, horn, horn direction, etc. So sometimes it's nice to know who's judging. Then I pick out of my, uh, heifer show pen which ones I think will do or show the best at that time okay. so I, that, that's what I do and I, I mean frankly you know it's I, I take what I think's the best that I have okay. and it's nice to come to some of these futurities because every rancher will tell you you know I we're around them all day mm -hmm. I'm breeding them sure I think my animals look the best so I enjoy, I have an open door policy at my ranch. Anybody can come, call, check it out. I, I, I do good with constructive criticism. I want people to come and say, she's nice, but her tail sets a little high, or this. I, I don't, I, I'm okay people critiquing my animals. I want to know that. It only makes you become a better breeder. So a lot of times, people don't know the surety judges when they're entering. Right. How do you gauge that? That's okay. I mean, I mean, I, I then, then I then I go if I don't know who's going to be the judge, I go in my ranch and I pick out my my best that I feel are the best that represent what I'm trying to do. Do you have a fraternity that is one of your favorite fraternities to participate in? Um. Yeah, I mean, I like, which is now the G and G Fall Classic. Yeah. Um, I like Wisconsin. I like Michigan because it's local. Yeah. Um. Sometimes some of these futurities kind of get hard because the traveling does take a little toll on the animals. 
and then you get there and you don't feel that they look their best. Um, so I try to keep it within a six, seven hour radius, even though, you know, the G&G one's eight, eight and a half hours. Yeah. Is there, what kind of prep do you do with your animals before you get to the future? I don't, I don't do any prep. I do, uh, they get a, they get a quick bath before they get out in the trailer. They get off any, uh, uh, pasture mud or anything they may have on them and uh, off they go. I mean mine are all grass fed. I mean I know a lot of people do show feed. I, my animals are my animals. I don't have the time to do a strict regimen feeding on my animals. Is there any animal that you have that you will never sell? Or get rid of? Uh, I used to think that about wanted woman and mini Oreo. Um, but uh, there's a time and a place that these animals have to go to another ranch and let somebody else breed them and see what they can do with them. And you just gotta let them go sometimes. Is it gonna be hard if they go home soon? Yes, yes. I've, yeah. I have consigned uh, Wanted Woman and Cherry Cheesecake, which I feel is my number one heifer, to the 2024 Legacy Sale. Oh, wow. And then I'm consigning. Uh, Gambling Gabby and Mini Oreo to the Hudson Valentine. So the the one in Fort Worth. In Fort Worth, 2024. Nice. nice. I've got some daughters out of them. Um, it's time to it's time to move on. So do you have any purchases in mind? Like ones that you're eyeing to replace them? I don't know yet. There's there's that's what's so interesting about this industry is every time I go somewhere. There's always a couple of wild cows that you didn't even know about, or you haven't even tracked, or haven't even seen. And it's hard when some people that don't have websites, so of course, you know, with uh, trying to find different genetics to bring into the ranch, I've been doing a lot of ranch tours, and uh, by far probably the best ranch tour, uh -huh, ranch tour I've been on is uh, Jimmy Jones. And there was nothing like watching 15, 100 inch, or 90 inch animals come walking over a ravine. It was just literally breathtaking to see these animals. And of course, you know, I'm like everybody else, I've got a couple favorites, but I'm interested in one of his number 245 that he's got. Pico Seller? Uh, we're in negotiations. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Maybe. I think Jimmy is, uh, he does a lot of, I think, is it woodworking or is it all leather? I think leather. Leather? Maybe he'll give you a, he'll do one of a fortune of her on leather. Oh, uh, that would be nice. you're getting into the industry I mean if you're getting into it because you want a couple of steers hanging out in the pasture and you just want to see them and you have no intentions of going to futurities then you need to look at certain genetic lines that you're not going to get the wild cow you know if you're going to get into it because you want to do beef then you look for more of your beefier animals with beefier genetics if you want to get into show I mean you've got to look at what genetic lanes and what those genetic lanes are producing so if someone's telling me they want to get in I tell them two things first of all research what you have the ability to make for your facility your facility should be everything safe easy to work cattle things happen in a second in, in, in the industry when it comes to working cattle so I'm all about a safe good facility when it comes to water and everything else and then I tell some of these people you know what come 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 visit and watch some of these cattle shows and some of these futurities and kind of get your feet wet a little bit you don't have to dive in and buy you know fifty thousand dollar cows and then wonder two years later why you're not making any money on it I mean that's why I know a lot of people that get out they get in too fast without doing any research and I'm guilty of that as well I mean mine was a impulse on seeing a picture of drag iron I'm like I gotta own some of those and I owned them I knew nothing about genetics nothing about breeding I didn't know anything about the industry when I got in and all the people that got it helped me get into it are no longer involved I'm on my own now I mean I had a lot of help with Johnny Hicks getting uh, ranch tours and getting into some of these ranches to get my ranch rebuild animals out of um, but as, as of now, I, I, I've been studying and learning and doing this all on my own. And my, what I'm doing on my own now is I'm starting to see, see it up here. And when you are doing most of your learning, is it at sales and at fraternities when you go and just observe? Or is it online, like looking at websites and that type of thing? Uh, both 
more going and visiting. All right. So you want to do a little rapid fire? Sure. Question and answer. Sure. Ready? All right. So tell me one thing that people don't know about you. I'm very loyal. Okay. What's the and thing? honest. Yeah. What you see is what you get. Yeah. True. All right. So what is the first and the last app that you check when you wake up and when you before you go to sleep? Facebook. <laughs> Facebook for cows. Yes. <laughs> All right. Your favorite place to visit. I have a place up in Cadillac, Michigan. 80 acres in the woods, dug a five acre pond, built a house up there in 2005. I went there every weekend before I got in the cattle business. Okay, wow. Then I got in the cattle business and then uh, cattle, cattle have kind of taken over some of my uh, spare time. I get it, I get it. So what is one thing you wish you had more of? Time. Because all the, all the money in the world doesn't buy you more time. Sometimes um, I'm not. I'm a, I'm a drama-free person. I, I don't do well with drama. I prefer no drama. All right. And the last one is what is something that you cannot live without? My family. Family and my cows. They they run a really close. They're, they're pretty neck and neck. Right. That's tie almost. Huh? Yeah, that's a tie. That's a tie. Well, is there anything that we haven't discussed that you want to let people know? I think we covered everything. Well. They can come visit you anytime. Anytime, and Lily, Lily, an open door policy. There's times when people are in the area. They need to. They're if they're traveling across the the states and whatever, and they need to place the stage animals or whatever. I do that. I have facilities to stage animals. Again, I'm, I'm, I just started this IVF work, so and there's a lot of a lot of things coming up for Laidback Ranch. Well, we can't wait to see it. I'm sure we'll see it on Facebook. You will. <laughs> All right. Well, it looks like we're almost to your ranch. Okay. All right. Thanks for the interview. Okay, no problem. That was fun. Yeah, it was.